Then on Wednesday, SpaceX launched the Crew-5 mission to the space station. On board the Crew Dragon Endurance spacecraft were NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh, Josh Kasada, Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina. First, let's check out the launch. T minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Condition. Engine's full power. And let's go. Seriously excited there. So unfortunately, um, so SpaceX and and then me consequently uh, live stream most launches in 4K resolution. Unfortunately, uh, whenever Na whenever SpaceX partners with NASA for a broadcast, whenever it's a joint broadcast between NASA and SpaceX, SpaceX piggybacks on top of NASA's. Uh, uh, feed. They basically rebroadcast NASA, which is in 720p. And so, unfortunately, what that means is, even though we get to see Starlinks and various other SpaceX launches in beautiful 4K, for the most important launches, the crew launches, uh, we only get to see 720p, which is really tragic. And uh, I've talked about the 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 issue of, of NASA broadcast resolution many times but but um you know it, it is what it is we we get what we get so uh, i i am considering uh doing a 4k ai upscale of the um uh of the launch but uh we shall see it's kind of late now i don't think anybody <laughs> you and i might care but i don't think the average public the average uh citizen is is paying attention to uh the crew launch anymore uh, and here is the booster landing, followed by spacecraft separation. Shannon, that call out. That call out for Shannon, Ireland, indicative of our final abort zone. After this, we'll see second stage shut off, and we'll be listening for confirmation of a good orbit, which tells us the crew and Dragon are exactly and where they need to be. Down. And there we had confirmation that the stage impact. One landing burn has shut down simultaneously uh, the entry and you heard that call for a good insertion we will coast for a few minutes there we can see the drone ship coming into view as falcon 9 Launch attempts stage one landing leg deploy you can see those landing legs have now deployed and as you can see on your screen and you can hear by the clapping and cheering behind me, Falcon 9 has landed on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And this is actually from my summary video, so uh, the spacecraft separation followed immediately thereafter. We are standing by for second stage separation. And there is separation. Dragon separation confirmed. And Dragon, this is your next Dragon captain is on. So it's interesting that on the crew launches, the trunk of the crew of the crew dragon, which is that unpressurized storage area there at the bottom of the spacecraft, uh, is empty. They don't typically send up. Uh, much, if any, cargo uh, in the trunk, which um, is curious because they're they're spending the money to get the crew up there. So I'm not sure why they don't uh, take advantage. Oh, hey, take advantage of uh, uh, the launch opportunity and get some com some cargo up there too. But uh, who knows? Now, like for example, I think there's still a couple of Irosa solar panels which need to be delivered to the station. Uh, that have never been 
uh, that well that have yet to be delivered and installed. Um, okay, so uh, ah yes, it took Crew Five about twenty eight hours to get to the space station, where they'll spend the next six months. As always during uh, Crew Dragon broadcasts, there's lots of there are lots of questions as to why it takes so long for Crew Dragon to get to the station versus the Soyuz, which launches from Baikonur in Kazakhstan and uh, gets there in just over three hours, I think is their, their record. Um, the reason is because, I mean, the reason involves orbital mechanics that are beyond my expertise, but, uh, but the basic reason is because the inclination of the space station was optimized specifically for launches from Baikonur, whereas it is not optimized for launches from Florida. They have to basically do more orbital corrections in order to catch up with the space station or or, or get on its its trajectory uh, when they launch from Florida. And so it takes it takes longer. It's not because Falcon 9 is a less capable rocket or the Crew Dragon is a less capable spacecraft. It just it purely has to do with uh, the orbital inclination, that is the, the, the angle uh, of the ISS's orbit around the Earth in relation to the, the location of the launch site. All right, now here is Nicole Mann coming through the hatch. She now has the distinction of being the first Native American female to fly in space. This comes 20 years after the first Native American man, John Harrington, back in 2002. ...to live and stay aboard the International Space Station. All hugs and smiles going around. Next one through the hatch is Josh Cassida, the pilot of Dragon. He's getting his welcome and hellos from the crew aboard International Space Station. And we see right now, right past Nicole Mann's hair, is Koichi Wakata of JAXA coming through the hatch. Look at that hair. I love long hair in space. They need to get a hippie up there, some dude with like flowing locks floating around. And last but not least, uh, to come through the hatch, what? Well, yes, that is right, Jimbo, Native American female, uh, Nicole Mann, look her up. Uh, last but not least, uh, Anna Kikina. This was the first time in 20 years that a Russian cosmonaut launched on an American spacecraft. Not since November 2002, when cosmonaut Nikolai Badarin flew on the space shuttle Endeavour with crewmates Ken Bowersox and Don Pettit. You may recognize those names from uh, uh, shuttle missions of yore. In addition, Anna is the first Russian female to fly on an American spacecraft, and she's currently the only female cosmonaut in active service over in Russia. I'm not sure how big their at, their cosmonaut core is, but um, uh, in uh, contrast with the uh, NASA's astronaut core, but uh, in any case, she is the only female right now. <laughs> 